तो वी वो डिस्कसिंग अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट उपनिषद इन द लास्ट क्लास एंड इन द लास्ट क्लास आई आल्सो सजेस्टेड दैट देयर इज अ सर्टेन प्रेयर दैट वी शुड डू बिफोर we begin the study of the upanishad and i explain this little shanti part that uh, we just did which is om sahana vavatu sahana bhuna does anybody remember what was the overall discussion from the last class uh, so that we can just make sure we recapitulate every everything before we go on to the next point hmm कहा घूम रही है लड़की घर जा रही है कहां से घर जा रही है आई वाज टेकिंग अ वॉक आई एम इन दुबई सो आई एम ऑन द वे होम नाउ ओके बताओ बेटा क्या किया था सो वी डिस्कस द मीनिंग ऑफ द शांति पाठ दैट वी डू इट स्टार्ट्स विद आस्किंग फॉर प्रोटेक्शन फॉर बोथ प्रोबेब्ली द टीचर एंड द स्टूडेंट protection not just in the physical sense but also protection for all the gyan that we are getting for the ability to receive so protection in a lot of senses it then talks about uh, nourishment so nourishment uh, of all that we are receiving like uh, this is a very subtle knowledge so the rest that we get out of it to be able to protect that to be able to nourish that and to be able to keep it and then the courage the courage to be able to come back to it come back to what we are getting over and over again to be able to stick to it hmm. so okay. that we can lighten the lamp of enlightenment for ourselves for the student that we are and also for to get the ability to be able to light it for everybody around us Hmm. Anybody else wants to add to it? Uh, you also told about uh, told about guru. There is not only a physical guru, but also uh, inner guru which we have inside us. Mm -hmm. So we have a asan inside us, which is you know filled uh, filled with our ego, with worldly self. So we have to just um, reduce that ego that. attitude that materialistic attitude of comparing each others and desires and all that all that thing we have to get protected and after after getting protected after getting nourished that asan will be begin for the guru to come and sit there and also you told that tejasvi na vadi tamastu means tejasvi means enlightenment so that means that you also gave us uh, a homework to light one lamp uh, i did i did it every day with that ghee only so you you told us that that one dia is enough to light whole room so if we are learning and we are understanding one upanishad with vigilance with great um, strength that determination then there is no need of uh, learning and going about other vedas or upanishad so that's what i remember wonderful lovely what else zora did you catch up on the class darling you missed it last time Yes, it is. Uh, I'm only halfway through, though, so I prefer not to. How will we believe the star then? Sorry, what did you say? Yes, star. How will we believe? We don't have hope. We have read the whole chapter. <laughs> hmm? Please, I'm going to finish it after. No. Okay. What do you remember from the half that you did? Um, oh. the the. honestly i don't think i can explain the mantra because i didn't write it down but the guru tatva bit um what i remember uh, the word that i took away is uh, surrender the reason that we turn to the guru is because um, that we are in surrender to somebody external uh, but uh, the guru tatva is present in all of us and when we learn to surrender we are able to accept direct knowledge lovely lovely what was your takeaway so now uh, sorry one second i was not able to finish watching the rest of the video cuz i had left but i can okay, um then. where are you uh i'm at the beach with bianca oh. and i uh, and sonika yeah <laughs> but um i will i i have some stuff written what give me one second okay 
So I guess, you know, I, 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 I guess when I left, it wasn't that far in when we were actually talking. Yeah. We, we, Did you get yeah. the results of your test? Yeah, I, I passed. My, <laughs> I got my green belt. Yes, Excellent. I did. Excellent. Wonderful. Sorry, I, I, I'm sorry I wasn't able to catch up this morning. I, I will make sure that I do it right after. That's fine. No, no, take your time. No need to hurry up. It's Brahma Vidya. You should only learn it once. Hmm. Vimalji, you were also not present yesterday, last class. I can't hear you. Muted. See, I was not aware of yesterday's class. No, no, not yesterday, last week. No, I was there. Okay, so what was your takeaway, darling? Uh, my takeaway was uh, uh, one thing which was there that there should not be any doubt that uh, of, about my transformation which uh, was a, one of my questions and uh, uh, the prayer that we was were talking about uh, initially Sahana Bhavitu, Om Sahana Bhavitu this was that for uh, uh, we learned the Sahana Bhavitu, not Bhavitu. Yeah, Sahana Bhavitu. Sahana Bhavitu. Bhavitu, okay. Mm. So Sahana Bhavitu. Yeah, so that means protection for our See, own. Or kuch yaad hai, ye to bol diya usne. Okay, I missed it out actually. That's how okay. you were coming in and out. Yeah. What was the biggest takeaway for you, Neha? Gudia? Tumne pad liya class? Haan, Didi. Yes, hmm. I have. I did. Uh, so, just, just give me one, one second. All in tangled. <laughs> All entangled. So, uh, Didi, we the all biggest. Uh, sorry, sorry, Didi. I said we are all entangled. Ha, uh, no, oh, my, yeah, right, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Didi, uh, I completed recording in two, three parts. So, what I could understand was first thing, which I'm going to repeat, I wrote it in steps. So, uh, first is that we need to have grace to start the journey then mm -hmm. i'm repeating this because i that's what the main thing that i understood mm -hmm. uh, second is ras uh, to enjoy it courage to con co continue it because it's going to take a lot of time mm -hmm. and we might just lose interest and then at the end is uh, enlightenment uh, and illumination mm -hmm. uh, so that not only we enlighten ourselves but people around us also, um, second is uh, uh, sometimes what I learned was sometimes you learn from yourself and sometimes uh, uh, you learn from the guru and to learn from the guru, the, the guru uh, will teach you that you need to lose the ego and only then we can learn. Um, and uh, the, all, at all okay. times. At hundred percent of the time, guys, you can only learn from yourself. There is no guru. Hundred percent of the times, you will only learn whatever you learn in your life. You're only learning from yourself. There is a prerequisite to learning. The prerequisite to you learning anything is the surrender of your ego. That surrender of the ego sometimes is easier, easier, easily facilitated by an external individual. Yani ki, koi saamne dikta hai, to paon chuna asaan hai. Koi dikta nahi hai, to jhukna mushkil hai. Is liye guru ka mahetwe. But seekhte jo hum hai, jo seekhna hota hai, jo learning hoti hai, वो हमेशा हमेशा आपकी आपसे ही होती है इसमें कोई तीसरा आदमी इन्वॉल्व नहीं है द लर्निंग ओनली हैपेंस फ्रॉम योर इट्स अ ट्रांजैक्शन बिटवीन यू एंड यू 
there is no third individual involved the third individual that usually we see involved is guru the function of the guru is for you to surrender your ego learning ke liye guru ki zarurat nahi hai ego surrender karne ke liye guru ki zarurat hai kya yeah? samajh mein aaya koi question hai koi doubt hai is bare mein does anybody have any doubts around this hmm? this should be very clear to everyone every single individual whatever they learn in their lives what is worth learning what they learn about subjects around them is different right like if i learn what is cotton or i learn what is wood or i learn what is uh, the character or uh, structure of a television that is external learning that is not worth learning that is avidya in one definition so there are two kinds of learning vidya and avidya did i explain this no okay vidya and avidya there are in different texts many definitions given for vidya and avidya one of the definitions says <clears throat> vidya that which is worth learning is that which is about the ultimate brahma or brahman reality consciousness which is beyond the study of what you can see hear feel touch yeah taste which is beyond the sensory perception that which you cannot see that which you cannot hear that which you cannot smell that which you cannot taste that when you learn about that it is called vidya what you learn about different other things is also in today's day and age called vidya but according to the shastras that is avidya not worth knowing would you know but if you know it you will only create karma like so the other definition of vidya and avidya is vidya is that which frees you from karma from karma bandhanas and avidya is that which entangles you in karma bandhanas so vidya gives you moksha and avidya gives you karma another definition i'll explain don't get confused hmm how does this give you moksha and how does that give you karma vidya means moksha and avidya means karma the other definition i said vidya means that which cannot be perceived and avidya means that which can be perceived by senses with me everybody with me hmm let's look at it let's look at any object that can be perceived by your senses any object say i can see my mother if i can see my mother if i can hear my mother if i can touch my mother anything i do with her anything i get to know about her anything that i don't know about her is all falling in the realm of avidya why because anything i do with her or her thought even is creating karma is creating some kind of connection with this individual soul that i have to take care of right now my mom just came she said this, namaste didi namaste gudiya class is not starting on my phone i'm like why are you coming so late now it's class time i'm going to get late now unfortunately on her phone there was no zoom only so first i had to download zoom now all of this interaction that i had with my mother is creating karma if i had done it peacefully also it would create karma but i am very short tempered so i did it not very peacefully it still created karma peacefully also karma not peacefully also karma if i help her 
she will have to help me back if i get irritated she will have to irritate get irritated back with me at some point right you understand anything i do with her that i can see feel touch taste i will create karma let's take another example you know in dinner we had some really nice uh, treats because i'm visiting some uh, one of my uh, aunties so she's a wonderful cook and then we i'm constantly uh, treated very nicely over here anywhere i go i'm treated very nicely but especially here it's like so i put we had bengal bengal everybody knows bengal brinjal eggplant hmm eggplant okay ek plant is called bengan in hindi we had bengan nice bengan andhra style beautiful wonderful with peanuts and whatever now i'm eating that bengan i'm constantly uh, appreciating taste the more i taste the bengan the more i appreciate it now so much karma is being created ek to i'm eating consuming bengan that some karma is being created with bengan i'm appreciating it some karma is being created right now i'm all in the world and i'm appreciating somebody somebody has to appreciate back some i have to feed somebody now in my life because they are feeding me such nice food I have to feed somebody back so no matter what you are doing with the external world you are creating karma you are creating some kind of you are perpetuating a cycle that will go further it is not going to stop it will go further this action is not stopping i am not stopping the action this action i have just put into motion it will go further whatever i am doing if i am attending the class on time is karma if i am missing the class also karma if i am late for the class also karma you understand this you with me no matter what i do with the external world it always creates karma even though you think you are doing kathopanishad upanishad means freedom we will get free but attending the class is karma rin bandhana karma bandhana if i am giving to you you have to give back to me if you have to give back to me then i also have to be present to receive it makes sense so no matter what you do with the external physical world it creates and then and therefore any knowledge which is related to this external physical world also karma even if i am teaching you how to do a shloka say i start teaching you do the shloka like this i just corrected no om sahana vavatu this correction also karma you can hear it even mantra if i am teaching you then also this is karma if i put some sound in your ear you have to give an equal sound back in my ear then the transaction will complete now i have set it rolling i am only putting sound in your ear you are not having the opportunity to give it back to me that's why i do small revision at least give me something back little back let's finish the karma here <clears throat> so no matter what whether it is speech or it is taste or it is smell or it is action or whatever when the knowledge is of the external world that can be perceived by the senses then it sets the karmic bondage in motion kuch bhi karenge aage chal ke iska cycle banega so all knowledge is of two kinds what are the two kinds of knowledge vidya and avidya avidya is that 
which gives you the knowledge of the world or the knowledge of perpetuating karma hmm abhi uh, say supposing somebody studies i'll take that question somebody studies business hmm? they study business then they go and work every single step that they take they will create so much karma they work in a company they become a sales person they work in a company they become a manufacturing person they work in a company they become a finance person finance person will do what cut cost sales person will do what sell a lot manufacturing will do lot use cheaper and cheaper raw materials every single now say sonal she puts her video i can see her she's a doctor she has liability she cannot give 100% prescription to the best of her knowledge to her patients why because there is chance for exposure kahi kuch galti ho gaya to पेशेंट ने क्लेम कर दिया तो हम 100 परसेंट नहीं दे सकते हम अपनी नॉलेज से आधा ही देंगे और अपनी नॉलेज अपने वर्ल्ड के हिसाब से ही देंगे इस फील्ड में तो कहीं ना कहीं कर्म क्रिएट हो जाता है कहीं ना कहीं कर्म क्रिएट हो जाता है कुछ ना कुछ भी हम करते हैं तो उसमें कर्म क्रिएट हो जाता है सो <coughs> so, <clears throat> two kinds of knowledge vidya and avidya any vidya vidya is that knowledge which is worth learning avidya you can learn to live your life but it only gets you entangled more and more and more and more avidya only perpetuates karma vidya per- does not perpetuate and in fact it shrinks the karma it shrinks the karma it finishes the karma and it takes you towards moksha moksha means freedom no matter what you do you are not going to come back freedom so any knowledge which is worth knowing what kind of knowledge is that vidya that vidya can only be learned by you yourself nobody can teach you prerequisite is surrender of the ego that means if you look at it carefully the requirement to learn vidya is to surrender a vidya the requirement to learn vidya is to surrender ego kis cheez ka hota hai ego usi cheez ka hota hai jo hum dekh sakte hain sun sakte hain smell kar sakte hain taste kar sakte hain ego kis cheez ka mujhe ye aata hai maine padha hai मुझे ये पता है मैंने सुना है ये मेरे पास है ये मैंने मैं छू सकती हूँ इसका ईगो होता है सो so ये सब चीजों को अगर छोड़ दे तो तुम क्या हो जो तुम दिखते नहीं हो जो तुम सुना नहीं सकते जो तुम बोल नहीं सकते जो तुम स्मेल नहीं करा सकते उसके अलावा तुम क्या हो हु आर यू राइट जो ईगो किस चीज का है ईगो अविद्या का ही है so when you drop a vidya you get vidya and any vidya that you can get you can only get if and only if you teach yourself no third person is required yes nidhi you had a question can't hear you anybody can hear her you very uh, take out your headset then speak uh just give me 2 minutes let yeah, me find out side you're okay we can hear you can you hear me now yeah yeah uh so my question is that you said any action that we do it's creating karma correct uh but then in that case when we are doing a duty what what is karma yoga then even that is an action which is a duty which supposedly does not create karma any action that you do with an ignorant mind will create karma with what mind sorry didi ignorant whenever you are in avidya okay. when you are in vidya you can do what you want no karma will be okay. created 
for as long as you are in avidya only karma is created nothing else will be created <clears throat> no you. need to get confused with karma yoga even karma yoga say supposing it's my duty it's my duty because i am an indian it's my duty to lay my life for my country can i lay my life for my country is that not creating karma or is that creating karma it's still creating karma yeah still creating karma it's my duty to take care of my parents yes if i'm taking care of my parents is that not creating karma this creating karma i take care of them nicely they'll take care of me nicely next lifetime it will be a pleasant relationship even in the next lifetime taking care of my parents or not taking care of my parents does not stop my coming back into this life you understand that that is a different study altogether which is vidya which we are going to study in the upanishad yes beta respecting mom and dad and doing good karmas is also a part of avidya how come you have to understand avidya means anything that perpetuates perpetuates you understand the word perpetuate means that continues the cycle it goes on and on and on if you are nice to somebody what is the reaction they'll be nice to you has it stopped there if they are nice to you you will be nice to them it's like you're playing ping pong it will continue to go on if you set a ball in motion it will stay in motion unless there is a force against it right what is your physics say does it say this physics padhe hue do saal ho gaye yaad hai kya hai physics ka formula kya hai bhai batao action and reaction is always equal action reaction every action has an equal and opposite reaction okay fine this is fine what else a ball in motion will stay in motion what is that principle inertia yes a ball in motion will stay in motion can it be stopped if you set a ball in motion it will stay in motion it cannot be stopped vidya will stop it anything i'm doing respecting my parents taking care of my parents being obedient being nice prepares me to receive vidya get it if i listen to my teachers prepares me to receive vidya vidya comes from where from me myself the action itself will continue to go on any ball in motion stays in motion unless there is a force that is exerted from the other side that force when it is exerted the karma will stop you can do things and it will not go anywhere it will stop that knowledge that can help you do that is vidya knowledge of the atma knowledge of the brahman which we cannot perceive we cannot read we cannot hear we cannot taste it is beyond that with me is this concept clear vidya and avidya this is not from the worldly point of view bhai padhna to chahiye hi koi usme koi doubt nahi hai you should work very hard you should study very hard you should get 110% marks if you can you cannot sit idle you cannot sit um in uh, sanyas no no that is not that is not the option ho gaya jab hame kuch karna hi nahi hai hum kuch karenge to karm ban jayega to hum kuch karte hi nahi hai karm bane wo bhi karm hai agar tum khali baith jaoge ek pura din khali baitho 
दिमाग में क्या क्या चलेगा दूसरों के दिमाग में क्या क्या चलेगा कि तुम्हें एक अच्छा खासा आदमी खाली बैठा हुआ है कितने दिन खाली रहेगा ये कर्म चलता ही रहेगा खाली बैठने से भी कर्म चलेगा खाली बस बैठने से खत्म नहीं होने वाले सो नॉट दैट बट हाउ डू आई ट्रांसफॉर्म माई लाइफ सो दैट वेन आई सेट द बॉल इन मोशन इट स्टॉप राइट अवे I set it in motion it stops I set it in motion it stops I have an equal and opposite force applied to it so that it doesn't go anywhere it's just right there that knowledge is vidya clear to everyone raje confuse nahi hona confusion to nahi hai koi dobara pooch lo agar nahi samajh mein aaya hmm? so i am not saying that worldly knowledge is useless when i say avidya it is not useless when we study avidya itself it's a very important concept we study it in yoga and we study it in bhagavad gita we the knowledge of the world is very important gaining that knowledge understanding everything and then surrendering it so that jaise koi bhi cheez hum खरीदते हैं तो उसका पेमेंट करना पड़ता है ना करता इफ वी बाय समथिंग वी हैव टू पे फॉर इट लाइक दैट टू बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड एंड रिसीव ब्रह्म विद्या द विद्या द अल्टीमेट विद्या द पेमेंट इज ईगो व्हाट इज ईगो ईगो मींस नॉलेज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड द पेमेंट फॉर दैट इज नॉलेज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इफ यू डोंट हैव इनफ मनी टू पे फॉर इट विल यू गेट ब्रह्म विद्या so you must have every uh, bit of knowledge of the world to be able to surrender it so that you can receive brahma vidya brahma vidya starts from where the avidya ends so end tak jaane ke liye karna to padega na end tak jaane ke liye utna seekhna to padega na संगीत सीखोगे तो भगवान मिल जाएंगे ऐसा बोलते हैं लोग बोलते हैं संगीत सीखोगे तो भगवान मिल जाएंगे पहले दिन किसी को भगवान मिल सकते हैं क्या इफ यू लर्न म्यूजिक यू विल रीच गॉड बट कैन अ स्टूडेंट ऑन द फर्स्ट डे बी एबल टू एक्सपीरियंस गॉड थ्रू म्यूजिक ऑन द टेंथ डे ऑन द फिफ्टींथ ईयर सी इट टेक्स अ वाइल You have to really, really go deeply into it. जहाँ पर ये खत्म होती है, वहाँ से वो start होता है. जब हम राजा बने हैं, गौतम बुद्ध, he is a king. He is not wanting for anything. He is a king. He has a beautiful wife, wife, the most beautiful girl in the world. He has the best education. he has a beautiful son newborn son progeny he has a wonderful caring loving giving father and family only a prince can reach out towards brahma vidya you have to become princely in your in your uh, aspirations in in your life princely absolutely princely there are थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट थ्री तत्व तमस रजस एंड सत्व एंड उपनिषद इज उपनिषद विच इज सत्व द मूवमेंट टू वर्ड सत्व करेक्ट रिमेम्बर फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट क्लास आई एक्सप्लेन दिस मूवमेंट टू वर्ड सत्व मूवमेंट टू वर्ड्स द अल्टीमेट मूवमेंट टू वर्ड्स गुरु और गुरु तत्व वी डिस्कस दिस सत्व so there are three inherent tatvas in us one is tamas tamasik second is rajasik third is sattva usually all three are present in every individual how they are present for anything when you don't know it when you don't do it when you have no experience of it it is at the state of tamas 
not happening not happened not worked upon it's not been initiated this space is called tamas when it hasn't happened when it is being pursued aggressively when it is being practiced aggressively i want to get all the money in the world i want to get all the knowledge in the world i want to get all the abilities in the world whatever it is that you're pursuing i want to be the best dancer the best performer the best uh, uh, teacher the best student whatever it is that you're pursuing when you pursue it 110% that state is called rajas where it is heightened action height height of ambition height of action you are completely full of desire to receive whatever it may be whatever be the subject hmm? so tamas is when you haven't even started if can you reach satwa if you haven't even started it's a gradual process from tamas you have to go to rajas only from rajas you will convert to satwa you cannot convert to satwa from tamas samajh mein aaya so upanishad is the study of satwa or the realization of satwa but satwa cannot be reached if you are not working very hard when will you reach god through music if you are really working hard working hard working hard working hard working hard at some point it will shift at some point it will become godly at some point it will become pure yes so one question i have is like so if we're working really hard and we're working and pushing so hard we made so much karma though at that point right because we're making because we're so then when we finally arrive does that melt it doesn't really because i mean we've talked about it like even when you arrive at the different states of i don't know i don't want to confuse too many ideas but i guess the idea is is like after you've made all of that karma in this rajas stage how can does it start slowly melting when you get to sattva yes. at that point yeah so sattva has three definitions sattva can be defined as three things you can write this down it has three aspects sattva has three aspects vicharanam vicharanam gati vicharanam spelling is v i c h a r a n a m vicharanam n capital ana vicharanam gati g a t i and avasadhanam a v S A D H A N A M, avasadhanam, vicharanam, gati, and avasadhanam. These are the three definitions or three aspects of sattva. Vicharanam means weakening. Literally means weakening. What gets weakened? The karma bandhan, the the perpetuation. there is a pressure from the other side it weakens the momentum of your karma weakening of these karmas weakening of the um, uh, of your vasanas weakening vasanas means karmas only attitudes mental attitudes uh, physical uh, direction that you may have uh, attitudes that you may have and inclination that you may have towards something these are all called vasanas yeah so weakening is the character of sattva sattva is weakening weakening what weakening the karma bandhanas second character is gati gati means movement right gati means movement you must have heard the word virgati everybody heard that word virgati except sonal virgati is a word which is used um for uh, soldiers when they lay their lives in um, 
in the uh, for their country they are called uh, they it is said that they have achieved virgati virgati means what does it mean it also has that word gati gati means this veer has gone to brahma or the ultimate gati means the ultimate knowledge movement towards the ultimate knowledge gati means movement movement towards what movement towards the ultimate knowledge hmm. the veer has gone towards the ultimate that means he has become one with the universe he is not going to come back like that it is believed so gati what was the first one vicharanam the second one gati and the third one avasadhanam 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 means destruction it means destruction destruction of war ignorance destruction of war destruction of avidya yeah so when you reach sattva to answer sonal's question if let me finish if you reach sattva you have reached after doing a lot of work in the rajasic space only then you can reach sattva but when you reach sattva weakening of all the existing karmas will happen one movement towards the ultimate will happen two yeah and three you will start being in vidya so the attitude with which you start doing work will become completely different so whatever you have acquired whatever you have accumulated even buddha he left his son and his wife and his father he acquired karma because he left them he didn't take care of them he acquired karma anybody who becomes a sanyasi has to leave the world if he has to leave the world means he doesn't get to pay back his rinas right pitru rin he cannot pay back because he cannot have progeny matri rin he cannot pay back because he cannot take care of his mother he is basically relinquished the, those uh, rights and responsibilities so even though you you have arrived at a certain place you still have some karmic baggage that you carry no matter what you will carry that karmic baggage but if you reach the sattva state it will weaken that karmic baggage it will automatically weaken that karmic karmic baggage and it will move you towards the brahma the ultimate as well going forward you will not create any karma because you are in avasadhanam the avidya has been completely destroyed so reaching that state is very beneficial even if it comes at the cost of creating a lot of karma because as soon as you reach there the karma that you have created will become very weak moving forward you will not create any more right and you will experience the ultimate as you go through your journey does that make sense or no uh yes yeah thank you i like yeah yes beta kya question tha aapka yeah you are using this word ignorance why ignorance is used for um avidya ignorance is used for avidya when you have vidya then there is no more avidya so your ignorance will go away so ignorance means we are ignoring the truth yes do you know your truth 
See, every time you will tell me I'm afraid or I don't know when. Biggest question, when will I be successful? When will people know me? When will people appreciate me? You're asking, no? Every day you're asking whether you're putting that question to me or not. Every single one of us, Vimalji will have the same question. Mamta will have the same question. Zora will have the same question. This is not you alone, Bache. Everybody has this question. When? Why do you have this question when? Because you are? Do you know? You don't know. That's why you have the question. The day you stop having this question is when you have realized yourself. The day you don't have to ask when. You know when. The day you don't have to ask why. You know why. You don't have to look outside to seek any answers. You have all the answers inside. That is called Vidya. And till then, we are all ignorant. Got it? Yes, Sona. You have a question? I've just been thinking about um, the aspect of how um, so many people, and we've talked about this before, is just like, uh, maybe they're they're special beings and they have access to getting to sattva for different reasons and yet they've never surrendered their ego and so they're they're kind of connecting to the inner guru but they've never released that part so it isn't I don't know I just I'm, I've seen it a, a few different times so I was just kind of <clears throat> it's an interesting thing. but all three have to coexist for sattva to exist See, what did I say? Vicharanam, Gati, and Avasadhanam, all three have to coexist. So not. Otherwise, it is not going to give you the result of sattva. Right? Just because somebody feels, it feels like somebody knows more. Yeah? From where you are sitting, it may feel like I know more. Not true. If I'm speaking still, it means I'm still ignorant. When I am full of vidya, I will shut up and sit in a corner. Make sense? From your vantage point, it may seem like this is knowledge. This is not knowledge. I'm also ignorant. But it seems like that. All three have to come together. You have to have the Brahma Gyan. You have to have complete destruction of karma going forward. And weakening of the karma bandhanas has to also be very visible. You know, I'm sitting in the US. I'm worried about my parents. Do you think my karma bandhanas have weakened? No. Okay, Just from your vantage point, it may seem like, ah, this is this is vidya this is not vidya we are all in a vidya i may be slightly two steps ahead of you in that journey not too much more in the bigger scheme of things moving towards vidya but not there yet so special beings also who from where you're standing may seem like they're special beings are also not there. Get it? Yeah, I do. Yes. Yeah, just because you have the capability of clearing the exam, like, you know, rabbit and tortoise, just because the rabbit can run fast, it doesn't mean rabbit will win the race. It may seem like they are very special, and they are very well equipped to get there, they must, they must be able to win the race. Where is the doubt in that? But till they have done it, it has not happened. Make sense? Even special yes. people, even people who have a great clairvoyance, people who have a great connection, people who are very, um, um, very, 
sorted in their heads, um, detached from their world. There are many different varieties of people, but permit, different permutations, combinations of um, weakening of karam bandha, bandhanas and uh, gati as well as avasadhana. Different variations, combinations, permutations, aisa ho sakta hai, ke kisi ka ek kam ho, ek zada ho, uh, kisi ko bhagwan dikhte hi ho, kisi ko aai rahe hai bhagwan, baat hi kar rahe ho usse. You know, somebody can have an audience with Krishna. Even that person is not in Vidya. Even though they have an audience with Krishna every single day. And Krishna is answering all their questions every single day. Still, even then, even so, they are not there. You know, we've discussed this in numerous classes in different ways. And, you know, I'm never daunted by the process. But right now, when you describe it like this, I'm like, wow, <laughs> it's an endless process to get to this point. And then you're at, and then you still have to, it, it, you know, I mean, how many lifetimes is it going to take to to do that? Um, even Only with one. like full blown. Easy. It is not daunting, darling. It is not daunting at all. See, all you have to learn lies within you. Everything that you need to do, you can do. It is completely within your power. The only thing you need to relinquish is the knowledge of the world. If you think of it like this, it will not seem daunting. The only thing you have to do is cultivate surrender. If you cultivate surrender, You'll get there in half a lifetime, not five, fifteen, twenty thousand. Doesn't take anything. The only thing, the only thing between me and my higher self or my ultimate self, what is standing between us is me. That is it. Yes, Vima. Surrender it on a That is the most I mean difficult part. And who rust maintain just in the previous class maybe Bulata that you have the desire, but still you have to you should have that courage to you know uh, maintain it and who rust the hena and you have to continue doing it the same manner. Bahipe fluctuation ho jati and you go hey like uh, if I'm going to talk about myself, Shuru Bada Josh se hota hai, fir uske baad ek tamhi cold ho jati. आप बिल्कुल सही बोल रहे हैं और इसमें कोई डाउट नहीं है कि ऐसा हो जाता है आ, पर इसके लिए साधना जरूरी है है ना ऐसा हो जाता है और इसको मेंटेन करने के लिए साधना जरूरी है ये कोई अचरज की बात नहीं दिस इज नॉट सरप्राइजिंग एट ऑल दैट यू आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग दिस दिस मे बी द एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ मेनी पीपल many individuals start and not many i will say 100% of the people they start anything they started with enthusiasm they put all their resources they'll buy the best notebooks and the best pens to write the subject matter right and like zora um show us your notebook your pretty notebook yeah see there you see wonderful notebook everybody can see it wait let me put it on the full screen देखो भाई ऐसी ऐसी ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल नोटबुक्स लेके आप बैठते हैं कि हम सब्जेक्ट पढ़ेंगे क्लास रिवाइज नहीं किया है क्या कर सकते हैं दैट्स नॉट टू पुट हर ऑन अ स्पॉटलाइट जस्ट टू से दैट वो होता नहीं है फाइनली यू वर एबल टू मेक द क्लास हा हार्ड क्लास टू मेक वो होता नहीं है क्यों नहीं होता क्यों नहीं होता बेटा क्योंकि साधना कम है रोज बैठता है बेचारा पुल के रियाज करूंगा होता है क्या होता नहीं है क्यों नहीं होता साधना नहीं है सो so, इसमें इसके लिए इसके लिए भी सोल्यूशन है उपनिषद में Yeah, Upanishad usually will contain a few subject matters. Let me just touch upon this. 
it will always contain brahma swarupa brahma swarupa means what is your destination where do you want to go right where do you want to go you want to realize the brahma you want to realize yourself you want to realize your true self what is beyond this face and this sensory perception who are you are you your voice are you your name are you your body if a part of the body falls will you not remain you will remain if your voice goes away will you not remain you will remain if your eyes close will you not remain you will remain who are you that brahma swarupa is always described in the upanishad very beautifully it is described every upanishad will have brahma swarupa second thing that every upanishad will definitely definitely discuss is srishti what is srishti maya our construct the construct of the being jiva and the construct of the universe jagat the jiva and the jagat is the srishti the creation every upanishad will cover these two topics jiva and jagat then the third thing every upanishad will cover is sadhana hum start to kar lenge samajh bhi lenge acha brahman aisa hai okay okay we have to get there we will also be able to understand all right fine this is srishti this is the jagat this is maya this is mithya whatever we'll understand problem comes in like vimal ji said cannot continue to do it ras nahi aata usme aage ek time ke baad kya karenge puri kaise hogi journey we are not motivated we are not motivated how will we do it sadhana the third thing every upanishad will tell you is sadhana kya karni hai how do you continue to maintain your enthusiasm you know i'll give you my example slightly crass bear with me you now two years back i lost my brother i keep bringing this back because it's very close to my heart i lost my brother my thought for a few days was maybe i will not be able to pray again this is very this is too much maybe puja nahi hogi uske baad mein mujh se karni kyu hai kya fayda hai a few days i had that thought but i i just came back from uh, tirupati and kanchipuram and this and that i'm still doing puja achamba hai it's surprising how am i still doing it because from the logical part of my mind i was convinced i will never be able to do it again logical my logical my mind of the world told me convinced me that this is not possible you know what happened to the other people around me half the people were convinced that are inke sath agar aisa ho sakta hai to ye puja bekari hai chhod do kuch log chhod diye meri situation dekh ke kuch logon ne puja chhod di meri chhuti kya meri nahi chhuti chhut nahi sakti usme ras aata hi aata hai sadhna purani hai जिनकी नई साधना होगी जिनकी पक्की नहीं होगी पूरी नहीं होगी वो छूट जाएगी उसके लिए उनको बहाना ही चाहिए ढूंढ ही रहे बहाना दे आर ओनली वेटिंग फॉर अ रीजन टू ड्रॉप क्लास मिस करने के लिए बहाना ही चाहिए ना कि जिसको करनी होती है उसकी मिस होती है क्या बट जिसकी मिस होती है उसको तो सिर्फ वो तो बहाना ही ढूंढ रहे हैं उनकी साधना कम है इसलिए उनको बहाने भी मिल जाते हैं ऐसा सो साधना इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट व्हेन यू हैव साधना व्हेन यू हैव साधना देन द रस विल हैपन 
and even if the rust will not happen the practice will happen and it is not possible for you to continue the practice without rasa किसी ने बचपन में डांस सीखा हाथ खड़े करो सीखा डांस सीखा सोनल हाथ खड़ा करो सीखा जिसने भी नहीं बचपन में सीखा और घुंगरू अपने उठा के रख दिए कहीं पे संभाल के उसकी साधना पूरी थी क्या उसकी साधना पूरी नहीं थी वो साधना अधूरी थी किसी ने संगीत सीखा उसके बाद संगीत पे वापस नहीं गए वो साधना अधूरी थी ऐसा पॉसिबल ही नहीं है कि अगर आपकी साधना पूरी हो तो आपका काम छूट जाए एक बड़ी अच्छी पिक्चर आई थी नाच मयूरी नाचे मयूरी क्या पिक्चर थी बता ना जरा किसने देखी है ममता कौन सी पिक्चर थी यार नाचे मयूरी ना साधना पूरी नहीं है बेटा साधना पूरी करो अगर अगर रस छूट जाता है, अगर क्लास मिस हो जाती है अगर आपकी किताब आधी रह जाती है भरी हुई तो आपकी साधना पूरी नहीं है बेटा हम हम सोचो हम बचपन में नई क्लास में जाते थे पहला ही पहला ही सेमेस्टर ठीक से पढ़ते थे उसके बाद सिर्फ कुछ नहीं करते थे उसके बाद सिर्फ गप शप इधर उधर जाना वाना बंकिंग वंकिंग यही सब होता था उसके बाद कभी पढ़ाई नहीं की फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर के बाद पहले तीन चैप्टर अच्छे से हर किसी को हर किसी क्लास के याद होंगे क्योंकि पहली तीन तीन चार चैप्टर तक अटेंशन थी उसके बाद अटेंशन गई उड़ गई पर जो बच्चे फर्स्ट आते थे उनके साथ ऐसा नहीं था ऐसा था क्या वो लगातार पढ़ते थे वो हर चैप्टर को पढ़ते थे और बार बार पढ़ते थे और होमवर्क भी करते थे और क्लास वर्क भी करते थे हम लोग की क्या साधना पूरी नहीं थी मैं तो उसी में थी तुम लोग पता नहीं कुछ हो गए कोई स्टूडियस टाइम्स सो साधना फॉर एनीबॉडी टू रियलाइज दिस अल्टीमेट गोल दिस अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ ब्रह्मांड देर हैज टू बी साधना अदरवाइज द कर्म बंधनाज द वासनाज विल कीप अस वी आर लेजी पीपल वी आर नेचुरली लेजी we give give up very easily we are not persistent if there is anything that i have completed it's because god's helped me do it i have not no persistence to do it if i have seen anything through it needs sadhana it needs grace and sadhana and grace are two sadhana feeds into grace right and then yeah. grace feeds into sadhana right so they're like kind of separate in a way yes but they are not you can only do sadhana if you have grace you can only have grace if you do sadhana so i was telling uh, I, i was having brunch with pamta and i was saying the first thing the the first ever thing i ever chanted was there was an episode at home where things were falling apart and somebody told me do om guru bhyo namaha okay so that was my first time that i did something continuously aside from when i was really young and i did some stuff i have told that story in other classes but when i really did like i really did that for a long long time i did it for like months and months no guru bhyo namaha i didn't know anything else 
I just did that. Just that slowly grew into small mantras. Then I, then I learned that sun has a mantra, moon has a mantra. And slowly I learned the Navgrah Stotram. In the Navgrah Stotram, it is written that if you do this Navgrah Stotram, God knows what will happen. You know, life will change and this will happen and that. Anyway. So I was very excited. Now I've like I have gotten hold of this coveted knowledge, Navgra Stotram. Nobody knows this. This is like life-changing mantra. I did that for years and years. Like now, teen sal, char sal. Morning, I used to go to office. I used to do Navgra Stotram 50, 50 times or something. Evening, I used to come back in between because this was life-changing, right? It, it said that, that it will change your life. Everything will change. Life will completely transform. Nothing changed three years. I was still the same. But was I the same? I had completely changed. Only physically it was not because this knowledge cannot be physically perceived. The Brahma Vidya cannot be physically. I had completely changed. I was sitting in the temple reading Narsim Sahasranam today and I was like, I don't know how I'm able to do this. Inside, I'm only watching myself do it and saying, I don't know how I'm able to do this. So, grace and sadhana are very closely interlinked. You have to have grace to be able to start. But, if you start, you will get more grace. You will completely transform. It may not be visible. It may not be visible. You may still go through a lot of different uh, karmic debts that you have lined up for your life. right? Which may mean that you may go through hard times, which may mean that you may go through losses. But believe you me, you're not the same person. The changes that are happening are happening at a level that you cannot even perceive from outside. Yeah. So sadhana, sadhana is very important. Sadhana will make you continue to follow the path. I, I maintain this very uh, sincere belief. If anybody has done Lalita Sahasnam once, they can never stop doing it. It is not possible. They can have a break. They may not do it for 30 years. It's not possible for them to forget it. It will come back in their lives. Yes. Namaste. Yes. I just wanted to say that so sadhana is basically everything what I've understood is everything is sadhana, then you require dedication if we have to come back, whether it's our relations or whether it's an activity that we are trying to do. So if we are dedicated towards it, is that what is? Uh, no, no, Bita. Sadhana is separate. Sadhana is specifically mentioned what practices you have to do to transform your mind to be able to, because see, your physical mind is limited to sensory perceptions. You know, what can you think? What can you think of your Whatever it is that you can think for yourself is limited. Okay. Your physical mind is limited. The knowledge that we are aspiring for is beyond your mind. It is something that you cannot perceive. You have physical perception. So, where is it from mental perception? Your mind is very small. Your mind is very small. Your perceive is very small. cognition is very small. Your processing is very small. This is very small. Your अपने आप को जानने के लिए ये बहुत छोटी है। hmm. See, imagine um, 
when the child is really small it's trying to understand its parents it cannot it cannot understand the parents point of view or perspective mm-hmm. yeah. the child is so small it's tiny so mind is a smaller faculty than our bigger being our entire being is much bigger than our mind mind is small imagine mm-hmm. it like that mm-hmm. because the mind is small it cannot comprehend this bigger space so what sadhana does is it kind of digs a tunnel hmm. through the mind kuch samajh mein aata hai kuch nahi bhi samajh mein aata to bhi hum karte jaate hain wo tunnel chal rahi hai chal rahi hai chal rahi hai ultimately i want to reach my higher self hmm. and that will happen mostly is mind ko samjhane ke liye jab hum shuru karte hain to hum bolte hain पुलकेत ऐसा करो बेटा तुम आदित्य हृदय कर लो तुम्हारे एग्जाम्स में मार्क्स अच्छे आएंगे है ना क्योंकि वी आर एड्रेसिंग द माइंड बट द इंटेंशन इज टू इन इन वोक द साधना इन यू वेन द साधना स्टार्ट यू विल चेंज लाइक आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन माई एग्जाम्पल नो दैट नवग्रह स्त्रोत्र लेड टू आदित्य हृदय आदित्य हृदय लेड टू ललिता सहस नाम ललिता सहस नाम लेड टू विष्णु सहस नाम गॉड नोज वॉट ऑल आई एम टीचिंग कठो पुनिशेस राइट नाउ ओके सो बिग जर्नी बट वेन यू स्टार्ट यू हैव टू कन्विंस द माइंड टू डू इट सो वी गिव स्मॉल लॉली पॉप डू इट फॉर दिस डू इट फॉर दैट डू इट फॉर दैट नाउ इफ यू डन योर साधना वेल आफ्टर डूइंग दिस when something bad happens like in your case your sadhana will not stop your faith but, but i still do question it yeah, like that's fine question not a problem has it stopped is my question if it has stopped means you didn't do it enough if it hasn't stopped in spite of things falling all over the place that means you're on the right path you will definitely are right because the job of sadhana is to continue to make you move forward but uh, to arrive in this lifetime is not of course guaranteed so like uh, i just explain you are you. only trying to reach your higher self the journey mm-hmm. is not very long mm-hmm. the tools are also not too many all you need to do is drop your false ego okay right tools are also not too many so it is this is a fallacy that it will take many lifetimes anybody who says that to you is wrong it will not anju ji it will not take so long <laughs> it will be, it will be possible right away if you approach it in the right manner okay. yes do you have a question no okay good to see you namaste didi i can't because my net has been playing up on me so it's uh, iffy that's why oh, lovely to see you didi i have a i have a question yeah uh when you explain the difference between avidya and vidya yes. in 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 detail you said the different uh, you know you gave various examples to say what avidya looks like but i think with vidya you just said one thing and i feel like i kind of missed it can you describe it is it like is yeah. it a statement all your avidya question avidya is what avidya is not if you right. understood avidya hena uh, you understood avidya hmm. avidya is all the knowledge of the world all the interaction of the world all the verification of the world if you think you are understanding me because you are listening to my voice you are mistaken your avidya is that you think my voice is making you understand what is vidya when you can drop this understanding that my voice is making you understand my words are making you understand only then you are in vidya how will you know this hard to explain it in words because your perception is very small and your perception is very sensory
Did you understand the example? Yes. Are there any more tangible ways? There is see? no tangible way to see Vidya. If there was it, if it was tangible, or if anything, anybody says that it is tangible, then it is not Vidya. If somebody says, if you do this, you're going to get the moon, not Vidya. You're going to get Swarg, not Vidya. Anything tangible that you can achieve from anything is not Vidya. Yeah. So in a sense, when even the questions and the search for knowledge drops, is that when you're in Vidya because you're just yeah. sense of... Okay. I describe the Vidya state in many ways, not one, actually two or three. One description that I gave you was when you do not have any more questions, you know everything about everything. The other description of Vidya state is when you have dropped your ego completely, when you are in complete surrender, 100%, when you are in your nothingness, then you are in Vidya. Third description that I gave you is everything beyond your sensory perception is Vidya. So I didn't give you just one. I gave you many examples, but it is hard to comprehend because it is not in your sensory perception. Nonetheless, I was saying what all does an Upanishad con contain? I told you Brahma Swarupa. Yeah. Second thing was Jeevan Jagat, Srishti. Third is Sadhana. Everybody is with me so far? Sadhana. And the fourth is Jnana Sthiti. Jnana Sthiti. Which means when this Vidya will happen to you, no? When you are in Vidya Gyan, what will you look like? So an Upanishad generally will answer these four questions or rather address these four subjects. Brahma Swarupa, Srishti, Jagat and Jeev, Sadhana, how to get there. And then when you get there, what do you look like? What does a realized person look like? What are the characteristics of a realized person? What will it mean for you? Hmm. Any Upanishad will answer these four subjects. Good. So we should not worry too much about all the things that I've described. The Upanishad itself will answer these questions for you. Fair? How are we doing on time? Oh my God, so far. Cool. I think we'll stop here. It's a logical place also to stop. Any questions? Everybody good? Guys, you would not be able to gather this from a recording. So please try and attend the class. I cannot insist on it more than I already have in the past. And I will continue to do that. Didi, you said 9 o'clock last week and today is 8 o'clock. I think I said 8 o'clock. Did, did, did I make a mistake? I, I got it late eight, because huh? I just didn't send a... I, I'm sorry. I, Amamta, I ate so much food. I was asleep. So I just snoozed off and then I couldn't send you guys a message before the class. That it's starting. No, no problem. I joined in late. <laughs> so it's 8 o'clock. I will again put a message on the group. It's 8 o'clock India time. The class. Any other questions from the subject that we discussed today? We did two things of significance. One is the definition of sattva. Yeah. And the other one is the content of an Upanishad. So for as long as you can remember these two takeaways from the class, that would be great. 
we also did a deeper dive into um, what is knowledge and true knowledge, vidya and avidya. So when I say avidya, it doesn't mean ignorance. It doesn't mean, it just does, it means it is not vidya. From the material perspective, from the worldly perspective, sari vidya lene ki zarurat hai. Aap chhod nahi sakte. Jagat ki vidya bhi lene ki zarurat hai. Wo chhod nahi sakte. You have to do it. Because that will show your rajas and that rajas will only transform into sattva. So you must work very hard. You must try very hard. You must continue to pursue whatever is coming in front of you to the best of your ability. Hmm. Neha, good. I cut you short, but I hope uh, you understood what I was saying. Yes. Okay, excellent. Lovely. All right. If there are no other questions, we'll wrap and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Have a nice week. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Thanks, Namaste. Didi. Namaste.